Hello again. Um, regarding touch probes, some of you will be familiar um, with my video series last year on exploring um, touch probes, low cost passive touch probes such as this one um, and the various issues that I found. Um, there's about eight videos. Please have a look at them on the Thread Express YouTube channel, um, just a few minutes each, exploring the accuracy issues with these low cost probes. They're brilliant in principle, um, two or three hundred US dollars, and you can uh, set your CNC machine to the work position very quickly using PathPilot or Mac 3 software. Um, just a, a fabulous way to quickly set your machine up. But there are error issues, and I'll go on um, after this to explain those to you. Um, so, what I've been doing over the last few months is developing a new type of probe. This looks superficially very similar. This is the Hallmark Design Limited Touch Probe, but it doesn't have the error issues of the low cost probes currently available. It's much more accurate and has other improvements to the design. I will just go on now and explain those to you. Probing is a great way to set your machine to your work, whether it's a bore or a block, the edge, a corner, or uh, the center of a boss. You can just quickly jog into the position. Use your control software to conduct a probing routine. Find the center or edge very quickly. Control software such as PathPilot or Mac 3 have very good facilities to allow you to quickly set your machine to your work. Okay, I'm now going to demonstrate the durability of the Hallmark Design Probe. Um, it doesn't have a fragile stylus a ceramic stylus that's designed to be self-sacrificing in order to protect the internals of the probe. It has a, a strong uh, design stylus that flexes very little and is accurate, um, but if it is crashed, the internals of the probe are designed so that they won't be, dis won't be damaged at all. So I'll just, damage, I'll just demonstrate crashing it now in both directions. Um, because you, you may, it happens so easily, you're, you're jogging and not concentrating, or you forgot to plug in the probe, or you've entered something wrong in the software, and you've suddenly broken your stylus. And this is what many of us have done. Um, so let's crash it in the Z direction, and just give you an idea of what, happen, what happens to this design probe. <laughs> no damage done. Okay, so equally likely you do something wrong in the X or Y direction or even you might drop it but um, let's say you're, you're just jogging in a hurry, you get distracted or you haven't plugged it in or something's wrong uh, with the software settings and you just crash into it. Okay, so that would be the end of your probe or at least your probe stylus with a conventional design, but with this one, it's unaffected. It's designed to be able to handle that type of load. Still operating fine, and all the advantages of being able to set your control point quickly to the position you want on your work. X, Y, zero, set. Okay, let me just recap on the um, accuracy problems with these low-cost electromechanical probes. Um, I did a series of videos and um, tests on these probes last year. If you look on my Thread Express channel, you'll see about eight videos as I slowly unraveled some of the problems. Um, they have a long, flexible, self-sacrificing stylus to protect the internals of the probe, but the long, flexible stylus 
just flexes too much and you just get um, major error issues. Um, some of you won't be aware of this, but it takes about 109 grams for the electrical trip to take place in one direction and in another direction uh, nearly 150 grams. So this is quite a uh, quick way to demonstrate the error. I'm just recapping it here. I've, I've set the uh, ball on the end of the stylus running true. You can see the dial indicator is in contact. That's a hundredth of a millimeter dial indicator. So what I'm going to do is jog up against a face. When it contacts the face, the dial indicator will start to move. When it reaches trip, the software will stop the traverse motion. So in that position, I'll just drive in towards the face. It's moved about six or seven hundredths. Okay, now I'll turn to another position. This would be the position that takes a higher load to uh, move the swing arms inside the probe to trip. Now we're moving 12 hundredths. So we're getting a difference in one direction of flex of 6 hundredths, maybe 7 hundredths, and in the other direction about 12 hundredths. That's a difference of an imperial 2 to 4 thou. Now this can't be corrected for um, by changing uh, the diameter in the uh, tool tables on the probe number 99 by entering a smaller diameter because you've got a different load in one direction than the other direction. Just to clarify this issue again, so we have a flex of the stylus from contact to electrical trip of between 0.06 in one direction and 0.11 or 12 in the other direction or approximately 2000 in one direction and 4000 in the other direction. Now you think, okay, well, we'll just make an adjustment on the uh, PathPilot tool table diameter setting, say tool number 99, which is the probe, we'll just reduce the diameter to allow for that flex. Um, well, you can't do that because it's different in one direction than the other. And so if you took the error in one direction of 2,000 and reduced that off the uh, radius of the diameter, um, that would correct it in one direction, but it's 4,000 in the other direction. So it's impossible with this type of probe to work more accurately than about 2,000. And that is a problem for precision work. Now with the new design hallmark design probe, it doesn't need to have a slender, fragile, self-sacrificing stylus stem, but it can be a more rigid tungsten carbide stem. So I'll just repeat the same test, clock the uh, spherical end up true and central spindle center line, and we'll just traverse now into that vertical face. So we're currently in contact with the dial indicator there. We're getting about two hundredths from here, about two or three hundredths movement. Same amount there. Same amount there. So you can see with a more rigid stem the issue of the different loads to trigger the tri-swing arm inside the probe of 109 grams in one direction and 148 grams in the other direction has a, a virtually no effect on the amount of flex before trip. It's, it's much less in the first place. We're talking a thou now instead of two to four thou. Um, and also it's almost consistent from one position to another. This means that you can make that small change to the effective diameter in the tool settings table and have a very accurate probe that will work to fractions of a thou instead of an error of about two thou. There are other issues with the low cost passive probes. Um, for example, the electrical contacts internally 
uh, give issues with corrosion and I'm not sure whether it's corrosion or electrical arcing causing the contact surface to be erratic and give um, inconsistent contact errors. Tormac themselves um, are aware of this problem and in fact they've mentioned it in their uh, service manual and there's various uh, comments on forums about this problem. So with the new passive probe that I've been developing I've worked really hard to uh, research and source materials for the contacts that uh, should be more durable long term. I haven't been testing this uh, prototype probe for long enough to be 100% sure that it won't eventually develop a problem regarding corrosion or arcing of the contacts and an erratic signal. Um, so I need to do more testing over a longer period of time. Perhaps in, um, it will become clear that the problem does not exist with this design um, as it does with the other design, but at the moment I can't be confident to make that claim. Hallmark Design Limited's new bulletproof high precision touch probe. <laughs> Thanks for watching.